Well, it's definitely summer outside, and for me, summer always makes me think of the beach. So, for the month of July, we are making beach-themed items, starting with this kind of abstract, ocean, beachy-themed doormat. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. Alright, so our first step is to seal our base for our doormat. So our doormat, like always, is a piece of kind of a rust-colored felt. You can use any color felt you want. That is cut one and a half by two and a half inches. This is the felt that you buy by the yard at the fabric store as opposed to the stuff in the square but from the craft store. Either will work. This is just a little more firm and a little bit better quality in my opinion. So we're going to seal it. We're going to use some matte Mod Podge to seal it. So I'm going to put some out here. And we want a lot. In fact, I don't know why I even bothered to do that. We want to saturate this piece of felt with the Mod Podge. This is going to do several things for us. And this is how we all, almost always start. The last several, this is how I started. Um, it will seal the surface so that when we do paint the top of our doormat, it, the paint will go on nice and evenly and smoothly. We won't use as much paint because the paint will not be soaking in. So the And paint is a lot more expensive than our Mod Podge. And we only need one coat of paint then, which makes it much easier. So I'm going to make sure I have all those spots covered. I'm going to let this dry. Uh, be sure and come through and move it around on your whatever surface you've got. Put it on something it can't stick to. Like I've got mine on my ceramic tile. Uh, which means I can peel it off if need be. If you've got parchment paper, that would be even better. But come through, let this dry for a while, and then I'll come through, I'll flip it over and let the back dry for a while, and then I'll flip it back. And try and make sure you flatten it out each time so that it dries nice and flat. When it's dry, it'll be nice and firm, it will lay nicely, and we can go on to our next step. So I'll be right back. All right, this is still a slightly damp in the middle, but that's all right. It will continue to dry to dry out through the back side. We are going to go on to our first layer of paint. And I am going to mix the color from my base coat. I want to make the base of this um, kind of a beige color. And I just got just a random white. This is a bottle of Anita's white craft paint. I just want to get it used up. And I have some... Burnt Umber from Liquitex Basics. And this one is always so hard to get out. But I am going to mix these together. And I'll probably turn the camera off so I can get this mixed. It's going to take me a while because that is so thick. But I want to mix this and when I come back I'll just keep going back adding a little brown at a time until I get a color that is what I want for the background on this. So I'll be back as soon as I have the paint mixed. All right, I've got it fairly well mixed. I think there's still a few lumps of brown, but that's okay. And I am just going to coat this with this color. What I want is a light, kind of a beigey color. The, this is supposed to represent sand in our design. So we'll be laying our what was supposed to look like water portion over this. So there, we've got kind of a sandy, I guess the beach area of our mat. So I'm gonna let this dry. And then when this is dry and I've got my mess cleaned up, I'll come back and we will go on to the next step. All right, that paint is, is dry. So now I'm going to put out some blue paint and this is an apple barrel in bright blue. This is one that Plaid sent to me, I think, yeah. And I looked for a really tiny brush. This one is a little smaller than anything they had sent me. But yeah, this will work. Because I want to make, I'm gonna to try to freehand this because I can't really draw it on with a pencil. I'm taking my inspiration once again from a, um, a doormat that I saw online. I'm changing it up a little bit 
to make it easier to do in the smaller scale. And this will all make a little more sense as we get, hopefully, as we get going. And I didn't need anywhere near that much paint out. I didn't want to use it out of the bottle because I was afraid I might have some wet paint in the tan yet. All right, now this is going to have to dry because I want to go right up against it in a few areas with my next color. So that needs to dry. When that's dry, I'll come back and we will add another color paint. All right, our blue paint has dried at least sufficiently that I can go on to the next step. And what I've got here is some Anita's paint in Island Green. And another really short... What I needed today was short, thin, kind of stiff brushes because I want to make sure I have control over where my paint is going. And like I said, I'm loosely basing this on a um, doormat that I saw online. It's not a copy, it's um, inspired by. And I know these shapes look kind of weird at this point, but we will, the next step after this, we'll tie it together a little bit. And I'm not, there's no pattern for this. Just kind of, you know, make little swirls of paint that, uh, that you like. You can simplify it or you can make it more um, ornate or whatever, more detailed. And I decided not to go with any kind of wording on this one. For, <coughs> excuse me, for one thing, because it would have been very tiny. All right, well, I'm going to turn the camera off, and I'm going to make sure I get this over closer to me and make sure all of this uh, island green paint is a solid paint. Whoops, I was partially off screen there. Uh, is pretty solid. I don't have my, much of the tan showing through. I'll let this dry and when this is dry I'll come back and we'll finish this up. All right, our paints have dried and I've got my white paint pen. It's a medium tip. A fine tip would probably be better, but my I, the only white one I've got is this medium tip. And what I'm gonna do and this is just I'm using this because it's a little easier to handle than a paintbrush, but if you don't have a paint pen, you can use a paintbrush for this. It would work really well. It's just, you have to be a little more careful. And I thought for the video, this would be a little quicker. Okay, I'm gonna turn it upside down to do this one. I have a diagram off to my side here that I kind of figured out how I wanted this to look. And yeah, so we're gonna let that dry and then we can see how it looks on the front porch of the dollhouse. Well, there's our beachy, oceany uh, themed doormat in front of our front door. I love how that looks and I can't wait to share with you the other beach themed items I have planned for this month. Uh, be sure and check the blog post for photos, sizes, color names, all that good stuff. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure and hit the like button. Leave me a comment. What kind of themes would you like to see for doll's house items? If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, be sure and hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching today, and I will talk to you later. Bye.